Hi, I'm Drew and this is Inside Defense. I've always been interested in martial arts. I started martial arts as an adolescent around age 12 or 13. Uh, I took a break for a long time, picked it up again when I was in my mid-20s. I felt really good about what I was training in. I was taking Muay Thai kickboxing and I was taking traditional boxing up in Northern California and Oakland. And I felt like I could take care of myself. If I was in a fight, in a conflict, I felt like I would be able to hold my own. And then there was a situation where one of the top Muay Thai instructors in San Francisco was held up at gunpoint and he was shot and killed. So all the Muay Thai experience that he had didn't save him. And that was a little bit of a rude awakening for me because I felt pretty confident, I felt pretty good, but what if someone pulled out a weapon on me? No idea what to do, hopefully I can outrun them. And then I just happened to hear about Krav Maga from some guy I met at a park, of all places, when I was doing some sport thing at a park. And it sounded really interesting and the practicality of it uh, piqued my interest. So that was my initial interest in Krav Maga, although it took several years before I actually started training. I took Kenpo Karate from age maybe 12 or 13 to 14 or 15, only a couple of years. That one is a lot more about controlling your body it's very specific movements that have to be done in a very specific way. It's less about fighting and more about completing movements and techniques in a very specific way. And at a certain level, combining those together. So in, in karate, I learned a lot about uh, self-control of my body and the discipline associated with that, which doesn't necessarily always flow through in Krav Maga because we're kind of spastic sometimes here. My uncle is a black belt in Kenbo Karate, and I always thought that was super cool, although I never saw him train in it. He never taught me anything. <laughs> he never taught me any, even though I wanted to. Uh, but just knowing that he was a black belt in a martial art to me was always super cool because growing up in the 80s and early 90s, it was all the karate movies and stuff like that. Karate Kid, of course, uh, one, two, and three. Uh, I was into Ninja Turtles. Everything was Ninja Turtles. Of course, there was G.I. Joe, Snake Eyes was a ninja. Ninjas were awesome. There was a whole bunch of karate guys in G.I. Joe, so that was pretty cool. And then there was like the, uh, all the other ninja movies and, and Van Damme, Kickboxer, and stuff like that. Oh, I bet that hurt. It's, it's been a little uh, disjointed. My journey along the pathway from a beginner to where I'm at now has had its, uh, its peaks and it's, uh, it's had its dips. I started in 2013 in Sydney, Australia. Took Krav Maga there for the year that I lived in Sydney. Just before I'd started doing that, Mr. Noy, who is my best friend since high school, started taking Krav Maga here in California. And so although I'd heard of it, I'd been interested in it, he actually ended up finding Krav Maga before I did. And uh, that inspired me to, to find a studio when I was in Sydney. And then uh, had a long break between uh, when I left Australia, when I finally settled back here, started training again with Noi, and then have had several instances of uh, going hot and heavy and then having some injury and then kind of falling off the training wagon, uh, getting back on. Then we had a pandemic and here we are. Uh, I have had a lot of, of ebbs and flows in my training because of injury and, and things of that nature. So when folks are, are hurt physically, when they're demotivated mentally or emotionally, when they're having a hard time just making time, things are getting in the way. The, the best thing that I've found for myself, one is to focus on myself. I gotta take care of myself. If I don't take care of myself, who's going to? And then to get support. So my wife has always been extremely supportive. She trains here uh, from time to time. And she is very, very supportive of me doing what I have to do 
to take care of myself and she's very, very encouraging and, and supportive of me making the time to get in here. Of course, I've always got Noi and the other instructors here and various training partners that I've had in the past. And then also just my own desire to, to keep my skills sharp. I think we've all found if we take enough time off that we start to feel like maybe we're losing some of the, the skills that we've developed here or the reflexes. Uh, one of the things that I always say is repetition builds reflex, but what if you stop the repetition? What if it's gone? So are the reflexes still there? Generally, I find that when I come back, the reflexes are still there, but I don't know until I try. And the not trying is what starts to worry me. So having the motivation, having the accountability partner, having the support, it all makes a really big difference. It's been really cool. You know, when I started at Beach Cities Krav Maga in Westminster, Noi was a relatively new adult instructor. He'd been teaching kids for a while, but he was relatively new at teaching adults. But he was several, I think he was already a blue or a brown belt at that point. I came in as, I think, an orange belt. And he immediately took me under his wing. And of course, as longtime friends, that was, that was great, but it was a different type of relationship, which was cool because he almost became like my Krav Maga mentor, which Noi and I have a very, um, a very a goofy, comical type of relationship. But when it comes to Krav Maga, I mean, he is, the way that he trains and the way that he teaches makes me want to stand there and say, yes, sir, <laughs> which was totally, it's totally weird to think about, but it comes very naturally. Anyone that's trained with Noi will get that. You know, off the mat, he's really very personable, very goofy. <laughs> <laughs> On the mat, sometimes he brings that, but he knows his stuff. And when he talks, you want to listen. And, and so the relationship between him as the teacher and me as the student has, has evolved very naturally, despite our friendship on the side of all that. I think that Every single woman needs to learn self-defense skills. I, I believe that with all my heart. I think that this idea that women can be victims or would be victims is far too prevalent. And I think that the mindset of being unable to deal with physical confrontation or conflict is unfortunately and very sadly, it is just indoctrinated into young women. and they don't necessarily know that they have the strength to take care of themselves, that they could easily acquire the skills. There are some things that we teach in here that anyone can do with very, very little difficulty. It does not require a lot of skill, it does not require a lot of strength, but they could be life-saving movements or techniques. They could change the course of a, something from a threat to that ends in disaster to a threat that ends in escape or perhaps even taking control of the situation. Uh, even something like just having the confidence, knowing that you can defend yourself for a woman, may stop the attack before it ever even happens. I, I think that every single woman and every single girl should learn self-defense. They should learn to take care of themselves and they should feel confident that they can take care of themselves. Children and learning self-defense or martial arts, I think it's good because there's a discipline element of it. If you've ever watched Mr. Noy teach a kids class in here, you'll, you'll see he almost brings that, uh, that military drill instructor thing. Push-ups, yes sir? Yes sir. Okay, so real quick, put your hands down real quick. No. All right, push-up position! Yes sir? Yes sir. He asked for his yes sirs and he asked them to not talk when he's talking and he asked them to listen and they listen and they say yes sir and they don't talk when he's talking. And that's pretty cool. And that discipline aspect of it, I think, is important for a lot of kids. As far as the actual self-defense aspect and the ability to, to take care of themselves, I have, I have uh, two sides of that. Do kids need to learn how to fight? Mm, I'm not convinced that they do. Do kids need to learn how to take care of themselves in a threat situation? Absolutely. One of the things that that I saw when I first started watching Noi teach kids classes, because I'd never watched before, I just came to the adult class and then left, is he teaches, and, and we teach in this school and other Krav Maga schools, just getting out of a threat situation. I'm talking when an adult threatens a child. 
not necessarily a schoolyard fight. We talk about that too, but I'm talking about when some grown up is like, hey, come here, kid, get in my car. But we teach them what to do, right? To draw attention, to raise their voice, to run away, to go find another adult that they know and trust. There are, there are very important things about effective self-defense training for children. So one thing that I thought was a lot of fun is grappling. I am not a terribly accomplished grappler, but I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, I took Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for a very brief period of time when I was living in Portland, Oregon, and I really wanted to get that first stripe on my white belt before I stopped, but I only trained for a few months before I went off to go live in Australia, and I never got my stripe, and, and that was pretty disappointing, <laughs> but, uh, but then I came to uh, BC Krav Maga and now GC Krav Maga and there's a whole group of guys that are very passionate about grappling and I've learned so much. What I love about training and grappling here rather than in a BJJ school is we get the Krav Maga element because throw in a bladed weapon or throw in the guy you're grappling with has a gun in his waistband and now he's trying to grab it. What do you do with that? Uh, throw in not just going for that tap but really finishing the fight or getting to a point where you can get up and get out. So for me, learning to grapple has been a lot of fun. Just learning the weapon self-defense has been really interesting for me. The, the gun disarms, the knife disarms, some of the more advanced technique in gun and knife has been really interesting and a lot of fun for me. When I used to take Muay Thai, there would sometimes be days where I'd show up for class, but I really didn't feel like working very hard. And so I'd always find the new student to partner with. That way I could go really slow and coach them. Okay, you need to pivot here and your arm placement goes this way. Make sure you get your extension, so on and so forth. So I always kind of enjoyed working with newer students. I'd never really thought about teaching. It really wasn't until Noy told me he was opening his school that it was ever approached and I ever thought about it. And even then I was like, oh, I don't, I don't think that I have the skills or the confidence to teach a class full of people Krav Maga. But Noy did, and he's the boss, he knows better than me, so uh, I better just shut up and listen to him. <laughs> so Noy spent a lot of time with me and he did, uh, he groomed me as an instructor and gave me a class. And that was really intimidating at first, but uh, that was a few years ago. It's become a lot of fun since then as I've uh, grown comfort and kind of developed into my own teaching style, but it wasn't something that I actively pursued and said I want to be a Krav Maga instructor, but when it came to me, it, it greatly enriched my life. So my passion is still stand-up fighting. My, my background is in Muay Thai kickboxing and boxing. I really love kickboxing. I think kickboxing is a lot of fun. When Noy agreed to give me stand-up fight class for the studio, I was very happy. I was very happy for the ability to bring Muay Thai to Gateway City's Krav Maga. I love teaching weapon disarms. Weapon disarms to me is a lot of fun. I think that it's extremely unique to Krav Maga. You don't get that going in traditional martial art. They may teach you some type of weapon use in certain martial arts uh, with the, the sticks and the knives and the scythes and things of that nature, but they don't necessarily teach you to take someone's gun away if they're sticking it in your face. And the idea that you could do that, that you could turn that situation around, that horrible life-threatening situation around with very limited skill, it doesn't take a lot to execute a, a basic pistol defense. It's amazing to me and I love being able to teach that to people. And trying to make the class relevant and engaging for every student on the mat is definitely a challenge, especially in a big class. Happily, because we have enough students here that have experience and have the liberty to train several times a week, uh, I don't feel so bad pulling those students and saying, hey, I want you to work with this newer student. We're gonna do this, but I want you to focus on this with this newer student. Or I'll find newer students that have come in separately and have them work together. That way they are at somewhat of a matching skill set and I can give them specific instructions appropriate to a new student, let everyone else do the things that are appropriate to their level as well. 
generally I have everyone working on roughly the same thing, but there are different adaptations of a technique uh, between a new student and an advanced student. So it's good to be able to toggle those and make the content relevant to every single person on the mat. A lot of people that want to train or, or have an interest in training do have a very hard time taking that first step onto the mat. One of the things that I found helps people to get onto the mat is to bring a friend. So bring someone else that feels awkward and doesn't know what they're doing and thinks they're going to look stupid. And you can do it together and you can feel awkward together. But once you come in and once you take a class, you're going to realize nobody cares that you don't know what you're doing because everyone had a first day here. People want to help you. And we have a great culture of support in the studio. So everyone wants to talk to the new students. They want to help the new students. If you can get yourself through, let's say, two classes, then you find that you can do it. Even if you're not fit, even if you've never done anything like this before, it doesn't matter. Everything in here is adaptable to anyone. Uh, one, of course, is just self-defense. It's the ability to protect yourself and your loved ones. And the other is that that culture, that community spirit that we have here. We do volunteer events, we help each other out. Students moving, other students will bond, or offer to help out, help them move. You know, I got a truck, let me help you. So just the, the culture of caring that we have here is extremely important to us. The thing that makes this school so special, and I think anyone will give the, ans the same answer here, is Mr. Noy. So Mr. Noy is what makes this school so special, and this is his school, despite the fact that he, he will insist that it's, it's all of our school. This, this school is the product of Mr. Noy, and if you can come in here and you can see the, the care that everyone has for each other, the love, uh, just the camaraderie, that's, that's Mr. Noy. GC Krav Maga is Mr. Noy. Do what is hard today, do the impossible tomorrow. I've always had support from Noi. Do you want to hold for a second? I think it'll go like four or five times. Okay. Keep keep that thought. It's a great day to train. Best day ever. <laughs> Click. I think there's one more beep. No? Maybe not. Okay. okay. Uh, from the top, so...